Hello folks, so here it is, the last little bit of the A-level course uh, is in this section all about controlling gene expression. Now you would have previously looked at controlling transcription and switching on or switching off genes in response to certain conditions and mainly the example we did was looking at oestrogen triggering transcription through the use of transcription factors. But remember that is only one part of the protein synthesis process, isn't it? Because you also have translation. So what we're going to look at now is something called RNA interference or RNAi, which is basically a means of controlling transcription. And it's it's some sorry, no, it's a means of controlling translation. Um, and it's something that your cells do naturally uh, because you don't want a piece of mRNA that you've made to be permanently in that cell, permanently on producing proteins. Your cells can use it to, to uh, switch off expression. But we can also exploit it artificially, medically, in order to switch off certain genes. Now this link here has an animation. It goes way beyond the level of the specification. I'm going to do my best to try and put things in exactly the level of detail you need. Okay. Um, so the, uh, the page UV booklet uh, that you have has this diagram on it. And it's not immediately clear what's going on on this diagram. And again, there's more detail than you need. Um, it explains it so it's step by step there, but I thought what I would do is I, I'd have a go at uh, doing it on the visualizer um, and trying to uh, explain what's going on in our control of transcription. Right, that looks pretty good. Looks like we've, we've got, uh, got the camera working. Okay, so um, in any cell, uh, you will, of course, have the nucleus okay, with your DNA in it. There it is. Um, and we know that what's going to happen is that little mRNAs are going to be made and they're going to be sent out into the cytoplasm and they'll sit on a ribosome which will start to churn out a polypeptide that will fold. Okay, so here's our protein here. Now what we're looking for is a way to interfere with this process of translation. Um, if we can somehow prevent this ribosome moving along tRNAs. Let's draw a couple of tRNAs, shall we? There's a tRNA with an amino acid. There's another one there. And there's our peptide linkage. Those are ultimately going to be added onto that. Um, we're looking for a way to interfere with this. So RNA interference works like this. It works on the assumption that this is always single-stranded when it's being transcribed. If we could somehow make it double-stranded, it wouldn't be able to go through the ribosome. And as a result, you would stop protein synthesis. So there are two ways of making it double-stranded. One is the perfectly natural way. Somewhere in this nucleus, in this genome, there are little sequences of DNA that will produce little short sequences of RNA. And to be honest, they, they often come out of the nucleus as double-stranded. So that's sometimes referred to as double-stranded RNA. And then a bunch of enzymes will process them so that you actually get a short bunch of single-stranded sequences. So basically, the enzyme will, will chop it up. Now these sequences on here will be complementary to part of the gene that those RNAs are designed to switch off. Look at what's happened now. Here I've got double-stranded RNA. It cannot fit through the ribosome and as a result translation stops. You stop making that protein. Not only this, there are enzymes in your cell that are programmed to find double-stranded RNA and chop it up into pieces and completely break it down. So that's something else that can go on there. The second thing we can do is that we can introduce this artificially. So you could, if this is our cell here, you could inject with a little needle, it's actually quite a big needle I've drawn there, um, but you could inject through a syringe your own little sequences that you may or may not need. These little sequences you will have specified, they will be manufactured artificially, but you could choose that sequence to interfere with a particular gene. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. Let's have a quick look. Um, basically, you've got these short strands of, uh, of RNA. Now, remember I said it's double-stranded RNA. That, that's what's going on here. This little double-stranded bit of RNA here. Um, once it gets chopped up and becomes the single-stranded bit, they refer to it as short interfering RNA. So it's called short because it's not a very long sequence and it interfering because what it does is it binds with a messenger RNA and prevents it being translated. Definition of interference. What you then do um, is 
have those short interfering RNAs binding to the complementary sequence on the messenger, it blocks its progress through the ribosome, translation doesn't happen, and as a result, it will be destroyed by that cell's natural enzymes. Watch the animation, but be warned, it goes beyond the level of the specification. You don't need to know Argonaut and DICER. You can just refer to these as proteins that are involved in uh, the process. Um, but the principle is the key thing there. Here are some key questions. I'll let, pause the video, have a little think about each of those. Um, the answers are there. Okay, um, so you can have a little talk about those and decide. And I believe that you've got space in your book to fill those in. Once you get to the end of that, there is a video link to watch here. It should still work. Um, and then a bit of uh, a reminder about the cancer. But this is stuff that can be self-taught. Okay, it's a recap of things that you did in 3.4. Uh, last year, and the key concept is this one here about uh, tumor suppressor genes and proto genes. Make sure you're okay with that terminology. Okay, I'm on email, ladies and gents. You can contact me at any time, um, so please do drop me questions if you need them. All right, I hope that short video just cleared up that last little bit of the spec.